Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers racial profiling, unreasonable searches, and solicited confessions, and comes to us from the Iowa Citizens for Community Improvements channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Let's dive right in and audit the interaction. On July 15, 2018, 23-year-old Montre Little and 21-year-old Jared Clinton were leaving a local park where they were stopped by Officer Kyle Thies of the Des Moines Police Department in Des Moines, Iowa. What's going on, guys? What's up? Is this your car? Well, it's a rental right now. My car's been shot. Okay. Did, you, did something break down? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you guys just came from over at the park, right? Yeah, we're just hanging out. That's it? Well, that's what we're doing. Is this your car? I just told you my car's in the shop, officer. This is a rental. Okay. How do you start it? What do you mean? I just put my foot on the brake and I put it in drive and I. Okay. Officer Thies' seemingly innocent question is much more tactical and accusational than it initially appears. Asking about starting the vehicle gives Officer Thies important clues about Mr. Little's relationship with the vehicle. If Mr. Little isn't familiar with the process for starting the car, it could insinuate to the officer that he may have stolen the vehicle. Likewise, if Mr. Little fumbles or acts erratically while answering the question, it could insinuate that he is inebriated. Either one of those scenarios could provide Officer Thies with reasonable suspicion to investigate further. Luckily, Mr. Little did not act erratically and seemed familiar with starting the vehicle. However, Officer Thies' question still segued into an additional question, which ultimately results in Mr. Little surrendering his keys to the officer. So it's your car, though? Okay. Did they give you a it's fob or something? My car, officer. Did my they car give you a key fob or something? Or? Yes, sir. Officer. Like, what does it do? Does it? You see, this, this, lets, this, that should let you know that it's in. Okay. Do you have any weapons on you or in the car? No, officer. Okay, can I be honest with you? It smells like marijuana in the car, and I can see shake on the ground. And your buddy's given me the, your buddy's given me the idea that maybe he's got a gun. The smell of marijuana is often used by police officers as probable cause to bypass the consent to search that is typically required from the driver of the vehicle. I have made a video that discusses the smell of marijuana and its relationship to probable cause in more detail that I will link in the info card above. It is important to note the speed at which Officer Thies draws his conclusions. Officer Thies hasn't even asked Mr. Little for his ID yet, but he has already concluded that the smell of marijuana is present, there is marijuana shake on the ground, and that Mr. Clinton has a gun hidden on his person only two minutes into the interaction. Officer Thies goes on to admit that he is basing his accusation about the gun purely on a personal hunch. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I think. Ow. I don't know. Just the, the way, I mean, just the way you're holding yourself, man. Like, that's why I'm, that's why we're nervous, man. That's it. I mean, if you're scared because you got a little bit of weed, that'll be one thing. Officer, okay. There's no weed. Okay. There's, there's no, no shake weed. on the floor. I don't have a gun. Okay. So there's there's no shake on the floor. No. Okay. All right. And you don't have any weapons on you? You said. Officer, that is correct. Okay. Do you have your ID on you? Why don't you want to get in trouble with the police? My brother's been pulled over multiple times for doing that. I live in Des Moines. I go to work. I don't like doing it. Okay. You don't got no weapons on you? Oh, Go ahead and step out, Montre. Yep, I just told you why. Three times. You want me to recap again? Officer, look, my hands is up. Yep, your hands are up, and now I'm asking you to step out of the car. I gave you my ID. You, you gave me your ID. Go run it. Yep, I don't want to. I'm not walking away from this car. Officer, can I ask you why? Yep. Because I just told you, step out of the car. If you don't want to go to jail, I would, I would, I would expect you to please listen. All I mean, right. I, I, I told you I'm a cop. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Don't flex. Don't flex. I don't know what you're doing, man, but you need to knock that off. Stop pulling on your arms. 
What's going on, dude? Where are you trying to get? What are you doing, dude? Officer, I'm not doing nothing to you. Okay. Well, you're making me think something funny is going on, man. Come on, man. You're not under arrest. You're just, you're you just, just, you just, you're just like, me. you're like pulling away like you're gonna do something silly. And I don't want that. What? Nothing. I what? I'm, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even gonna. Okay, well you're not under arrest, man. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, sure. That's fine. Okay, so slide over here. I mean, your heart is thumping, dude. Like, you're beaten. Officer, don't, don't, please don't. Don't what? Have, have a seat. Have, okay. have a seat. I want to, I think that your buddy has okay. a gun. So I need you to step in the car. You think I my step buddy in, has a gun? He's acting funny. Step in the car. Please. Officer, if you on. If you don't step in the car, you're going to jail for sure. Okay, that's so fine. So step in officer, the car. So step in the car. Listen, listen. I, I don't want, officer, I don't, I'm not, officer. I'm done listening. I just told you, I think that your buddy has a gun. Now knock it off. Can you spread your feet just a little bit? Okay. All right, come back and stand with me, okay? You're not going to run from me, are you? How old are you, Montre? March 25th, 1995. You supposed to be drinking in the park there? Officer, I don't, officer, that's just in there, okay? There was no gun, there was no weapon to harm you, officer. We didn't do anything wrong, we stopped at the stoplight. We pulled over when you pulled over. I did everything you asked me to, officer. You thought there was a weapon, there's no weapon. We wasn't doing anything wrong, officer. I'm not sure why you pulled me over. That's your rental, everything is fine. There was no breaking tail light or nothing, officer. I did nothing wrong with you. Okay. Officer Thies' original reason for the stop was never made public, and Mr. Little makes a valid point. Based purely on the information in the video, there doesn't appear to be any valid reason for a traffic stop. The tag, registration, and functions of the vehicle must have been valid considering that the car is a rental, and it would appear as if Officer Thies was unaware that there was an open container in the car because he had to search the vehicle in order to find it, and he made no mention of it to Mr. Little at the beginning of the video. Leaving a park is hardly a crime and certainly does not justify a traffic stop. Many aspects of this stop are based purely on the speculations of Officer Thies, and it is reasonable to assume that the stop itself was based on a hunch. If I take them handcuffs off you, you gonna can you dump out that bottle of alcohol for me? Uh, I can do it in the time, officer. Is that good? Yeah, of course it is. Good? We straight? Okay, so here's the deal, like, you and I know, I mean, let's, let's, let's start over, let's, let's root with each other. Did I make anything up when I said the car smelled like marijuana? Yeah, a little bit. A little hold bit. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because there was nobody is there smoking in the is car. Is there marijuana shake on the floor of the car? Officer, that was cigarette ash, okay? There's no, you didn't find no marijuana. I did, I'm not charging you with marijuana. I, but here's, here's what, if, if you want me to, if you want me to be real with you, like, I want you to be real with me for a second. Like, did I make that up? You know what I mean? Did I, did I just, did I make it up? I believe so, officer. It is unclear whether Officer Thies is seeking validation or a confession, but Mr. Little calls the officer's bluff and refuses to grant him the satisfaction of either. Any legal scholar will tell you to never admit anything to a police officer, and Mr. Little's honesty very well could have saved him from being charged with a crime. The 1969 Supreme Court case of Frazier v. Cup affirmed the legality of deceptive interrogation tactics and essentially granted officers the authority to lie in the line of duty. Law enforcement officers often use the Fraser ruling to their advantage by pretending to be friendly and lenient in order to solicit a confession from their suspects. No matter what an officer says, it is never in anyone's best interest to admit anything to a member of law enforcement under any circumstances. The Fifth Amendment protects citizens from answering questions without legal counsel present 
and the right to remain silent is a powerful tool that every citizen should be aware of and invoke when necessary. Okay, so you want me to just write you the ticket for the stuff that I have to write you tickets for? Uh, if you think that I'm lying, like, then we'll go to court and we'll, we'll talk about it then. Okay. Or awesome. do you want to just be real with me and I'll be real with you? Wow, awesome. Right? I, I would like to pull out my alcohol link your action to officer. You didn't find anything. We wasn't doing anything, officer. Okay. So you're not going to admit that you maybe were around people smoking or something like that? Officer. Were you around anybody smoking? Cigarettes. That's it. Officer, there's no weed chick on the, op there's no weed chick on the floor, officer. Oh, okay. All right. After failing to secure a confession, Officer Thies allowed Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton to pour out the alcohol that was found and go on their way without making an arrest or issuing a citation. A few months after this incident, Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton teamed up with the social justice organization Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement to file a lawsuit against Officer Thies for violating their constitutional rights by stopping them without reasonable suspicion and conducting a warrantless search of the vehicle. In June of 2019, the Des Moines City Council agreed to a settlement of $75,000 with Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton receiving $25,000 each and the law firm that represented them to receive the remaining $25,000. The Des Moines Police Department conducted an administrative review of Officer Thies, which led to the officer being removed from patrol duty but not fired. The City of Des Moines contends that the administrative review's findings can be kept secret because they're considered a personnel record and are part of an attorney's work product, which are exemptions in Iowa's public records law. Overall, Officer Thies gets an F for racially profiling Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton, violating their constitutional rights, and using shady police tactics in an attempt to solicit a confession for a crime that did not exist. Officer Thies was involved in a separate incident earlier in 2018, which resulted in a civil rights case being brought against him with elements of racial profiling at the forefront of the accusations. That lawsuit is still ongoing. The Des Moines Register reported that Thies was responsible responsible for 253 arrests in 2017, with about half of those arrested being African American. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, only 11% of Des Moines residents identify as Black or African American, which suggests an unusually high racial disparity among Officer Thesis arrestees. While several factors may affect the racial makeup of the people in officer arrests, those numbers complemented with documented cases such as this one, do not shine a favorable light onto the policing tactics of Officer Thies and ultimately cost the city of Des Moines $75,000. Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton both get an A for remaining calm during the interaction, resisting the coercion tactics of Officer Thies by refusing to admit guilt and following up this encounter with legal action. Members of the Des Moines Police Department have been featured in two other videos on my channel, and it seems that the department is relatively well known for its poor relationship with its community and overall bad policing. But very few have been appropriately compensated for the misconduct of the department, and even fewer police officers have been held accountable for their actions. I commend Mr. Little and Mr. Clinton for taking the necessary legal action and finding success within the justice system, and I encourage other Des Moines residents to hold their police officers accountable. Perhaps after the financial burden of police misconduct weighs down on the city, major changes will be made, and the citizens of Des Moines can rebuild their relationship with their local law enforcement. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.